Hey, Magic fans. Welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG. We got a couple of stories today, and they're going to be doozies. We got UPS employees accused of stealing Magic cards, 25 k worth, and they're making a Commander standalone game. Well, before we get started, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. The comments down below will feed that YouTube algorithm. And, you know... There's also TCG Player and eBay store down there. Uh, we're having the Thanksgiving thing going on, so make sure you get into that drawing. Also, uh, you know, it'd be cool if you watch some videos and stuff. Otherwise, I might have to start taking sponsors, and nobody wants to see me on, on, on feet.com. I'm just saying. Anyway, so we have an article here posted um, on November 19th. That the UPS employees are accused of stealing $25,000 worth of Magic the Gathering cards from inventory. This is interesting. So, <clears throat> if we scroll down here. Sugar City, Ohio. Idaho, Idaho, Idaho. The owner of an Idaho game store is hoping to be compensated after three UPS workers allegedly stole what he believes to be at least $25,000 in merchandise and potential inventory sales from him. So... The twenty-five thousand was how much it was worth being sold, not what he paid for it. Definitely two different things. But anyway, Jarek Smith, I think, is how you say that name, owner of Holiday Fun and Games. Interesting spelling. Says beginning in October of twenty twenty-three, he noticed that multiple UPS packages containing his inventory weren't being delivered, and the company claimed that they had been damaged. We had a package go missing back in October 2023, and we never could track it down to figure out what happened. Within a week, we had a second one, and it was marked as damage from a liquid spill of some kind. They claimed that another package had leaked out of it uh, or leaked its contents onto other packages and that the damage is beyond repair, says Smith. I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense because the products that I have in my box are all shrink-wrapped. In February, the business lost another package, the UPS claiming it was damaged too. Smith says a regular customer, a UPS worker, but not one of the suspects, happened to be shopping in a store in the store one day, and Smith decided to discuss the missing packages. The gentleman who works at UPS was at the store, and I was just chatting with him and hanging out and said, yeah, do you know that we've been losing a lot of our packages? We talked, and I said, well, I'm pretty sure it's getting stolen at this point because it's the same supplier. And it's the same kind of products that they're getting. Many of the alleged stolen packages contained playing cards of a popular game, Magic the Gathering. Depending on the cards, the decks can cost anywhere from tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, technically, yes. Uh, Smith says the customer immediately began investigating the work, and they were able to catch one of the suspects. Were valuable shipments targeted? According to the court documents, a deputy at the county office signed in June... Contacted the security supervisor at UPS. Supervisor told the deputy that they were investigating two employees. They identified as uh, Jerry Hodges and John Forsyth. As they were suspected in stealing items from the facility. Just in general, not just this guy. Uh, Hodges reported working in the area where damaged packages and items were, possess were processed and repackaged. According to police reports, deputy says he utilized his knowledge of incoming packages and their associated shipping companies to designate certain items as damaged. Uh, believed to have allegedly been targeted because of the suspect's interest in gaming. Oh, God. Great. <sighs> I know we're geeks, but come on, guys. Supervisor described a specific incident where Hodges reportedly took a package addressed to his relative, opened it, and repackaged it in a larger box with a stolen Lord of the Rings 6 disc set from the Holiday Game Store shipment. Hmm. Let's see here. Internal investigation, according to documents... Uh, admitted in July to doing this multiple times, told deputies he would return the stolen items. Police reports say he eventually returned multiple PS5 games because, you know, nobody wants PS5s. So that's not anything that was scalped recently. Uh, magic cards, phone chargers, Pixel Google phones, miscellaneous clothing. Uh, he stole items worth at least $1,800. I'm sure they're worth more than that. Uh, PS5, magic cards, uh, Pixel Google phone. Uh, the PS5 is almost half of that. That's 500 bucks easy. Um, I think they're kind of lowballing this. <clears throat> anyway, supervisor reported to the deputy that they were investigating another employee, uh, Mitchell Wilwind, uh, as removal damage packages. Uh, 
Uh, two cases of Red Bull caught him at 362. I'm sure that's way under underballed. Uh, it wasn't until the 16th that was also he admitted to stealing packages. Total value of five grand. That's a little closer to what it's probably worth. Uh, let's see. Uh, he knew it was prohibited, but stole anyway. Yeah, I know it's wrong to steal, but I did it anyway, and I'm sorry. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, so long story short, if you're in the business of shipping like I am and other stores, um, if you buy from people, um, they're going to want the items back. And also, make sure you always ship with insurance. Uh, because to be fair, if you ship with insurance and stuff don't show up, UPS has to pay for it. Um, and I'm pretty sure what got them suspicious was the fact that they had a high payout rate at this facility because shit went missing. I.e., don't do dumb things, people. Seriously. Good lord. <clears throat> but there you have it. Nothing safe. And like I've told you before about UPS, uh, my personal supplier has had several issues with them. Luckily, none of my items. Uh, but now he charges insurance, so... That if any item does go missing, we all get refunded the money. Um, and magically, it stopped happening to other, other people that were ordering from him. Imagine that. So, also, though, it could also be a scam by UPS to get you to pay more. So, let's not get into that tinfoil hat uh, conspiracy, but hey, whatever. Uh, also, coming in is the new Magic the Gathering uh, testing a standalone Commander video game. Hasbro has revealed this. CEO Chris Cox has teased the new Magic the Gathering game based on Commander. Oh, based on Commander. Now, we have Brawl, which is based on Commander as well. Um, spoke about boosting the collectability of Arena. How is Arena collectability going to be boosted from this being a different game? Weird. Anyway... Uh, the parent company Hasbro is testing a video game version of Commander, which may be released separately to the existing digital game of Arena. According to the Toy Maker boss, Arena has some serious missed potential. Yeah, gee, do you think? Maybe it's because you suck at doing it. Anyway, failing to tap into Magic's biggest format, as well as card games collectability. Uh, this was revealed in a recent interview the CEO published on November 20th. Yeah, because you give everybody everything and then nobody wants it. And also, this is digital items. Nobody wants to collect digital items for the kind of money you're charging. That's dumb. Anyway, moving on. Well, you can just actually get cardboard, which is at least something you can touch. The multiplayer format of Commander has become the most popular way to play Magic, dwarfing other pot paper formats. Yeah, because most of their formats, people cheat and... Uh, the, biz the people who run the, the games cheat and... Everything's rigged sometimes because of the matching system. So much bad things. So many. So many bad things. Um, so yeah, the only way you really have fun playing the game is to play with your friends because they ain't going to cheat because nobody cares. Anyway, um, Cox told investors in an earnings call in April that he wanted to bring Commander to Arena. However, the first sign that Hasbro is planning, planning a brand new game for the format. Uh, the obvious advantage is to bring it to the format to Arena rather than starting a new. Arena only has a, already has an established player base, working ecosystem, and perhaps most importantly, thousands of cards programmed in. As an eternal format, Commander has a card pool of more than 20,000 playable cards. Uh, just a fraction of that is going to be a serious headache, especially if the devs are starting from scratch. Yo, heaven forbid the guys who do programming who won't fix the shit that's wrong actually develop something for the game. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. Uh, on the other hand, Arena was not designed to host matches with multiple players. We know that. Um, why they didn't design it that way, I don't know. That seems dumb. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a gamer who plays the game. You know, not the people who try to make the game for the people who want to play it. If that, you know, because God forbid they make it the way we want to play it because we're the ones playing it, not them. Anyway, I'm D4 flashbacks. Anyhow, uh, the new client transformations to the new, to the AI and more robust engine of sorts. Uh, would be needed. Plus, many cards have already been programmed into the game. Arena may not be a good foundation. I mean, it is. You're just going to have to do work, but at the same time, if you're going to build a brand new game, you could just program Arena with the same people building the game. I mean, I mean, really? Like, anyway. The notion of improving collectability on Arena can catch up with Paper Magic is also something Cox raised back in April. Um, 
at the time, don't know what he meant, but to Bloomberg's, he's now now given an example of a game he thinks has done it better, Marvel Snap. To be fair, Snap's not too bad. Uh, but to be honest, it's not magic, and I don't care for it that much, to be fair. Uh, I mean, it's fine, but whatever. Um, he's talking about placing greater emphasis on alternative alternative card card styles and art. Marvel Snap not only has loads of cool variants and various heroes and villains, it also has much function what lets you upgrade cards, like making them shinier, break out their frames, etc., etc. I mean, that works in a digital format if you want people to pay for cosmetics. I'm fine with paying for cosmetics. I'm perfectly okay with that because I won't, and therefore I don't need to spend money on it so the game can be free for me. Um, but as they've learned, that doesn't work in the paper world because... <laughs> People honestly don't like to collect 5 billion things of cardboard um, when it's all the same card. Just no. Like you see here, like people don't care about any of this. They just want the card. Maybe two sets, like this one and, and maybe this one, the original and the extra one. When you have to recollect it as a reprint, it just sucks. So there you have it. Um... So, let's see here. Uh, Hasbro's also working on a D&D game. Uh, didn't give any details about it. Um, yeah, because, you know, they they probably can't live up to Baldur's Gate 3 because they didn't make it, and it was made for players, which is what they're not doing. So, I mean, whatever. Um, but yeah, so, there you have it. Um, talks here about making innovations. Uh, unlockable feature you can strive for rather than that's able by default. And again, I'm fine with cosmetics if people want to pay for them. But to, I mean, as long as the game is free, because I'm not paying anything for digital stuff, that's just not going to happen. And if I do pay, I'm going to pay one time to have the game forever. So, eh. It's a cruel world, Cox. It's a cruel world. Anyway, until next time, be kind. And as always, I hope to see you across from the game table or. Maybe soon across my new video commander game. Who knows?